Hey everyone, my name is Root and we are here. This is going to be week number three of the UBL and uh, a few things happened here. So we are up against Johnny GB and his Oregon Ducklets and this battle was actually played a bit ago but I completely lost track of time uh, because of preparing for packs and I somehow uh, lost the audio to my vocal track on this one. So here is post packs, post comedy, uh, which is why I'm going to sound miserably sick. But ultimately, this is going to be one of the worst matchups I think I'm going to have all season long. And here in Team Preview, here's some of the things that I'm looking for, right? So the way that I built my team was pretty much completely around Orbeetle, all right? So every other Mon here is kind of just made to uh, put dents into the team for my Orbeetle. And this Orbeetle is Stored Power, Calm Mind, Iron Defense and sub now obviously a few things have to happen for me to be able to make something like this work right um volaby has to not be there right and he did not bring the volaby i don't think he's brought the volaby all season long um at least in t up until now so very glad not to see that in team preview um also i was really hoping to see toxapex because i was kind of relying on the toxapex being there to get some free turns right so um, I know the Toxpex is going to want to Toxic the Ore Beetle, and it's going to want to set up Toxic Spikes at some point in the game, right? So any anytime that I see Toxpex on the field, I'm going to want to sub up with um, Ore Beetle, and I believe I calc it out so that um, with a Calm Mind up, I, I always take two Scald or something to that effect. But regardless, um, I really wanted to be able to take those hits, and if I get a free Iron Defense up, if... If the Toxpex switches out to Dragapult or Bear Skewda, as I get an Iron Defense up, then I can manage those those threats a whole lot better. And if I'm behind, and if I'm behind a sub, then I can start to deal with his entire team. Anything that's on his team, I can deal with it outside of the Volibee, obviously. A everything other than that is just kind of pretty standard. Um, I have a really offensive Cinderace. I have a Scope Lens Super Luck Togekiss, so I'm really hoping to crit, to get as many crits as possible, right? Just going for as much damage as possible, again, just to uh, open the door up for Orb Beetle in, in a later game. I wrote a Mo that's just super defensive and can hopefully spread some burns around, just to, again, make it easier for my Orb Beetle in, in later game. And this Claydol is Scarfed, and uh, its only job is to uh, Scarf Rapid Spin at some point in the game. I see on the other side a lot of what I expected, but definitely, I mean, I definitely didn't see the Toxic Girl coming. I definitely thought that the Steelix would come because Steelix felt like something that would stop a lot of what I wanted to do. It would have forced me to think a lot more about how I maneuver myself in this matchup. But without the Steelix, um, I can pl play my Togekiss a lot more recklessly. I can do uh, a lot of things here, but with that, I'm going to get right into the match. Okay, so here we are into the match itself, and I'm going to speed this up a little bit, but um, I believe I end up uh, leading off with the Quagsire just to kind of gauge his team, and I, were, and I really did want to test out if I could uh, Toxic the Rillaboom early, because I did think that would be a little bit of an issue for me. So uh, this Quagsire was built to uh, bait in the, the Rillaboom and try to wear it down over time, right? So um, whatever he wants to lead off with, I assume uh, this Quagsire would, would want to bait in the Rillaboom. I can sub up on whatever um, attack he goes for or whatever uh, switch he makes. And from there, I can Toxic the Rillaboom. That was my only goal in this interaction, and there's literally no other way that Quagsire can touch Rillaboom. So, um, getting it out of the way for, to kind of open the door up for Quagsire to, to kind of sit in front of certain mons and um, to be able to do certain other things felt important to me uh, early on in the match. So that's what I was going for in the early game. And he ends up going into the, into the Hatterene, which surprised me. But now I'm behind a sub. Uh, I really didn't have anything to lose, I felt like, by just uh, going for an Earthquake, gauging damage... Uh, we can gauge damage on each other and just see where we're kind of at uh, in this kind of matchup here. But ultimately, um, I don't really feel great about what this Hanarine uh, is here to do. I feel like this Hanarine um, is going to be really strong and I really don't feel like I have the best answers to it, right? So I really um, prepped a lot for his uh, physical threats, right? So he has the Bear Skewda and the Dragapult. And those I know... Um, I. I put a lot of time into trying to figure out how to beat them, and then this Hatterene, I, I didn't entirely expect to come, or at least like to play that central role, but he does reveal the Giga Drain, which does make the Quagsire really vulnerable in this spot. Uh, not that I was ever going to keep it in anyway, uh, I need this Quagsire to kind of deal with some other things, obviously, like the Bear Skewda, right? So, 
I go straight out into my Cinderace. I expected to want to go go for something that my Cinderace resists. I think he expected me to go into uh, Rotomo here, but we can take the Mystical Fire and we can start getting off really strong Pyro Balls here. And Cinderace is kind of a monster. It was much more so than I would have uh, thought it would be, but it's been a lot of fun just clicking buttons with Cinderace. And here I'm thinking about whether or not I want to switch out. Oh, and I do click U-turn instead of Pyro Ball. Um, as he does stay in, U-turn uh, does an okay amount of damage, but I will be able to... Uh, do I go back into Quagsire? No, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I go back. I go into Togekiss. This felt like uh, overall like the best catch-all because I really don't have a ton of special defense on this team uh, that, that, that I brought because, again, I really wanted to be as prepared as I possibly could be for his physical threats and um my thinking with his uh special threats were I'll just deal with them as they come but the, but I really want to prevent like those those physical threats those fast physical threats from beating me outright right so uh I do get an air uh, an air slash off I don't get a crit so no super luck scope lens crit for me but I do get the flinch uh, which is not Serene Grace boosted, but either way, that does mean that, that another one will be a KO on this Hatterene if he stays in. Although, uh, like I said, the this, Sogus this is just here to, to deal out damage, and uh, so far, uh, it's been doing that. I think it's my KO leader so far in, in the season, and uh, it just slots in and deals a whole lot of damage to, to the opposing team. He brings in this Anaconda, and... Right off the bat, I'm doing half with, um, with Air Slash, so it is going to be a straight up two AKO, and Santa Conda goes down without uh, ever really getting to do anything. Uh, I was a little bit confused why Sandspit didn't activate, but I assume that's because uh, it has to be hit with a physical move or, or a move that makes contact. I imagine I'm not too too sure about it still, but regardless, that allows in the Bear Scuda, right? So this is an interesting spot for me to be in because. I really, um, I, I'm always going to have the Quagsire to go into, the Quagsire's Water Resorb, and I really wanted to test him out in this moment, because Quagsire is obviously the safest play for me to make right now, and I felt like uh, I wanted to test out early on to see what he would do with a, with a potential Quagsire in the bag, would he try to call the Quagsire coming in, or would he try to, to um, or would he just, um, play it out as normal, so he does double into Rillaboom, which made me think that uh, he's not going to want to willy-nilly just water move into my team with a Quagsire in the back. So Rillaboom does get a fat critical U-turn off on my um, on my Rotomo, but uh, that that Quagsire in interaction was huge for me because that's going to dictate a lot of how I play in, in this later game. So now the Dragon Hole comes in, and my only thinking here is I want to get a status off on this thing if I possibly can. I'm pretty positive that I can take a hit, and I just want to get a Willow, a Thunder Wave. I actually don't remember which, which one I go for, but I want to get some sort of a status on this thing because, again, everything, uh, every bit of contribution is going to help out uh, the rest of my team. But um, the fact that I don't think Dragapult is going to necessarily um, go down so easily makes me think that I go for a Thunder Wave here, but uh, just to make it more manageable for other mods, like like even my my togekiss or something like that but um but it's a tough position for me to be in right because like i said um this dragon pole is definitely scary and i and i am a really defensive rotom but he does go for the u-turn so i don't ever get to, to status this thing on this turn so hopefully i can get something as it comes in Hatterene comes in, and I believe I end up burning myself. Yeah, this is the moment where I end up burning myself. And if I would just gone for the Thunder Wave like I would originally thought, it would have at least been a, a null turn, and I could have Volt Switched out next turn and figured something out, but uh, that just put me in a really awkward spot right here. It also means that I'm never going to get uh, healthier through Leftovers, uh, whereas that was super clutch in my last week's match, where Rotom got progressively healthier over time. And it helped me take hits in the, in the later game in last week's um, match. But uh, he does switch out, goes right back into the Dragapult. As I, I believe I'm just sacking off this Rotom because 
I really didn't feel like there was any type of maneuvering that I wanted to make here. I really felt like I just wanted to uh, sack this off and get a, you know, start from scratch, basically. But uh, I get a Leaf Storm off. It does slightly more damage than I would have expected, but uh, just goes for the U-turn, just picks up the KO. Totally fine. That was his KO to claim right there. And now we start from scratch, like I said. So he, uh, we're going to see what he, what he wants to bring out. But right now, things are still looking okay for Orbito, except uh, I'm still considering, I'm still trying to figure out when is going to be my, my moment to kind of uh, set up properly, right? So part of me is thinking that it's right now. You can see that I'm hovering over it. I'm thinking about it, and it's going to be my moment, right? So I'm just going to I'm just gonna kind of go for it. I'm going to see that this thing is Choice Scarf. So I have a lot to think about here, and... I, th I figure no matter what this thing wants to do, I can uh, sub up and I can try to figure something out from there. I don't think that there's anything this thing can do that's going to deal the most damage to me. I mean, it does get a U turn off. It does uh, an, an okay amount of damage, but it's nothing that's going to, you know, break the, break the game for me, right? So I can get a sub up here. I can start to try to make something happen as he goes into the Hatterene, right? So, so here's another moment where I am thinking in my head, right? I could definitely try to set up a a calm mind and try to deal with this Hatterene 1v1. However, that's going to put me in a really bad spot in terms of dealing with a follow-up Bear Scudo or a follow-up uh, Dragapult because again, those are so aggressively in the back of my head right now that I end up going for the Iron Defense and I think that this is a huge, huge mistake on my part, but uh, ultimately, this kind of puts me a turn behind because it does allow him to click Mystical Fire. Whereas, um, if I started call mining early, earlier on, then I can potentially, um, start dealing with these mystical fires, uh, maybe a, a little bit better. Maybe I can, um, come out of this one on top, at least against the Hatterene. So, regardless, I'm going to try to, uh, call mine up now, but, uh, I'm going to be able to gauge from this damage how much, uh, mystical fire is going to be doing. And it's just never going to be, this is never going to be a matchup that I'm going to win. I thought, uh, this is a very offensive Hatterene, obviously. And, uh, yeah, like I said, this is just not going to be something that, that I was going to win. I thought, I definitely did not think enough about what this Hatterene could bring and what, and what could and what it could do to me. But, uh, yeah, like I said, this is very clearly not a winning position for me. So, uh, I'm, right now I'm thinking about what I want to go into. That could maybe give me some sort of positioning in this matchup here. Um, I go into the Cinderace again to try to bait in another Mystical Fire, as I did before with, uh, I believe it was the Rotom Mo. And uh, now I have an opportunity to kind of deal some damage here. But now the problem is that it looks like I gave him a, a few too many turns of Leftovers Recovery, and now this thing is a very decent amount healthier than I left it. So, I can Pyro Ball, and hopefully it KOs, but he ends up switching out into the Bear Scudo. But my point is that I was very nervous clicking Pyro Ball in that moment, because it was healthier than I would have if, would have expected it to be. And I do get a crit on the Bear Scudo. Now, uh, it's funny, because I, I have grown to love a Choice Bandit Cinderace. If I did uh, have Choice Bandit Cinderace on a crit, then that would have straight up KO'd Bear Scudo right off the bat. And that would have been amazing, honestly. But that never happens, right? And here is a huge, huge moment where I'm thinking to myself, again, I have a Quagsire in the back. Is he going to freely throw out water moves against my team with a Quagsire in the back? And he does. Um, it, it was a moment that uh, didn't make sense to me in the moment, right? So we talked after the match, and he said that it, he felt it was just a moment to take risks. And uh, I definitely respect it, but I did not see it coming, especially because... I believe, um, I, 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 I don't remember quite when, but, but I believe I kind of figured out earlier, relatively early on, that this Bear Skeeter was, was banded. And so, if it banded itself in Aqua Jet, then I, then I always bring in Quagsire, I get the Water Absorb, and I get the sub for absolutely free, and then I get a free Toxic off on something, unless it's a Hatterene, which is awkward because I can't, uh, Toxic the Hatterene. Regardless, um... Now I'm in a position where uh, I can try to deal some damage to the Hatterene with 
with um, Togekiss. I finally do get a Super Luck crit, and I it doesn't KO, but I also get the flinch. Now, that is where those rounds of leftovers really mattered, because that Hatterene withstood that hit on a sliver, and... Uh, that flinch came through for me. I got the flinch and the crit. Uh, I, I believe Super Luck, su sorry, Super Luck Scope Lens, uh, is a 50% chance to crit, and that flinch was, is a 30% chance, and they both came through for me in that moment. Um, but the Bear Scoot is gonna come in, and now I really don't have solid answers to it. But, but again, I have the Quacks in the back. You can see, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it real, real hard, because I can't imagine this... Uh, this mon going for another water move in this moment, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna try to try to attack and see what happens Because uh, I think he's trying to beat me into something I think he's trying to double into Rillaboom right now like he did um, uh, the first time this interaction happened and If I can get an air slash off on that Rillaboom, then I'm in a, an amazing position But he clicks liquidation again, and uh, this is definitely the game making play uh, Those two bear, bear scooter plays were definitely uh, the game making plays because, um, obviously I had the Quagsar in the back. This thing is banded. Uh, if, if he had gone into Rillaboom either time, then I would have done major damage. And then, I don't know. I don't know. He, he just absolutely called me out on the way that I wanted to play up, play this matchup. But now I'm going to try to make this thing happen again with, uh, this sub Quagsire. And thankfully, now that the Hatterene's gone, maybe I can make something happen. But uh, from here, I simply don't think I have the resources to win, right? Um, I think primarily um, those two Bear Skuda plays, uh, taking out my Togekiss and taking out my Cinderace, um, just kind of took out my my biggest chances to to end up winning this matchup. Uh, without those two, I again, I just simply don't think I have the resources anymore. So. I'm going to play this out as best I can. I got a Toxic off on the Rillaboom, uh, for whatever that's worth. And from here, uh, I'm also going to try to to uh, get whatever damage I can on it. Oh, I switch out an Ore Beetle. Probably just uh, to... Oh, no, he switches out. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure what, what I expected there. Oh, maybe I thought that I could take a Drum Beetle. Yeah, I, I probably could because of how defensive Ore Beetle is. Regardless... He brings in the Dragapult, and this thing is also Scarfed, which I don't think I ever realized until uh, until this late in, in, in the, into the matchup. Um, but it, it was good to know now. And then, because I was preparing for... Um, I, was, I was running Calyx for Orbital against Banded Dragapult, and he ultimately just goes for a U-turn. We end up taking it, and I believe I just go for like a for a raw, like, no-boost or power here, if I remember right. But ultimately... Uh, whatever happens is gonna matter a whole heck of a lot. He goes into Toxic Rogue, which is 4x effective, so it actually does a little bit of damage against it. Um, and here I'm thinking like Toxic Rogue Sucker Punch is just gonna win him the match from here. Uh, I actually kind of wanted to play off of uh, him potentially killing, clicking Sucker Punch and just go for Iron Defense, trying to um, mess up, trying to play some mind games with Sucker Punch. But he ends up being special with Dark Pulse, which is super interesting to me. Uh, and it doesn't really matter because I was never going to be able to take it out with another short power anyway, so um, uh, that in that interaction never really uh, mattered. But uh, it does mean that if he doesn't have Sucker Punch, then Scarf's Claydol can come in and claim a gosh dang KO. Uh, it's first time coming out. It's going to be uh, claiming KO. So Claydol comes in. Uh, it's going to be Scarfed. I. It would be amazing to me if it did have... Um, if it did have... Sucker Punch as, as well as Dark Pulse, but we do take it out. And now I'm starting to think like, is there any way like uh, Scarf Laydoll can can pick up any other KOs? But uh, ultimately, that Rillaboom is going to be the biggest problem because I don't think I don't think there was any way to make uh, this Claydoll offensive enough to to KO a Rillaboom from basically full. So I. I can click Psychic, I can deal some some chip damage, but ultimately, this Rillaboom is going to be able to um, deal a lot of damage and then and then KO my Quagsire for the win, and uh, that's going to be how, how the match ends pretty much. So again, um, I had a game plan that was very specific, uh, that was very dependent on some very specific things happening, um, but like I said, this is how I felt like I had to play this matchup because 
because I think this is absolutely going to be my, my worst matchup that I have all season on paper, right? But not only that, but obviously, uh, Johnny DB just just uh, completely called me out on those liquidation plays with the Quagsire in the back. If I had called out either of them, I could have gone into Quagsire, got some free HP back from the Water Absorb, and then made a double click sub. Realistically, I would like to believe that in that situation, I, I would have uh, made a double instead of just, you know... Uh, clicking sub again when when I know that sub uh, really doesn't do a whole heck, a whole heck of a lot for me in that in that situation. But yeah, that's going to be how uh, week three ends. Uh, it was a really really fun match. There are obviously some things that I wish I would have done differently, but uh, ultimately, like I said, I truly think that I brought what I thought I would have needed to bring, uh, given the matchup and given the situation. And in the end. A lot of it just came down to whether or not I switch in Quagsire on uh, those those Bears Gita plays. And man, it would have been a hugely different matchup if he had brought the Tox Specs because I would have had such free turns to set up. And this match could have gone completely differently if my Orbital ever got started. But uh, yeah, with that, like I said, that's going to be week three. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon. Actually, um, tomorrow will be the matchup with top uh for week four and that's gonna be a super interesting one but uh once again with that thank you guys so much for watching on up once again out